This lesson talks about a very powerful tool for making selections and creating lines. This tool is called the Paths tool. And for an example, I'm going to trace out an apple, and what we're going to do with that apple is we're going to actually remove it from its existing background. Combined with isolating the background using color, the Paths tool can help you create some really cool images like what you see here. And if you would like to learn how to make any of the images you see here, please click on the link below for the corresponding image. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the Paths tool out first, which is right here. The goal is to actually just kind of isolate this apple from its background. Now, I know that I have other lessons where I show you how to make use of uh, the color in the image to isolate the background and a, with a layer mask and a couple other things like that. And honestly, this image could probably, um, that could probably work with this image too. But for the sake of the example, I'm going to not use that method. Instead, I'm going to just use the Paths tool to trace this apple out. Now, I will say this, the Paths tool is only really useful whenever you're working on a crisp edge, a relatively sharp edge. This doesn't work very well whenever you're working with things like hair and stuff like that. So um, if you're working with hair, I recommend just kind of skipping it with the Path tool and then using the isolate background using color method that I mentioned in another lesson. If you haven't seen that lesson yet, I'll go ahead and link it below. All right, so let's go ahead and click on the paths tool right here. Now, and then just, I'm just gonna click out here and drag somewhere. And you'll see while I'm dragging, it creates these two lines that kind of extend out from where I clicked. And whenever I release, they stay there. And then if I click over here somewhere else, and I drag, you'll see it creates a curve. Now what it what GIMP is doing is it's taking these lines that I'm creating that are extending out of the center and it's building the curve using those lines. Essentially the curve is going from one point where I clicked and then to the next point where I clicked, but it's using these lines for the tangency. So this curve stays tangent to this line at all times. Or so now if I click over here and I click and I drag again, you'll see it'll create another curve. And it's always going to be tangent to the lines I create. So if I click over here and I drag again, you'll see it becomes a really big wide loop here. Now if I click and I make a really small line and I come back, it makes a really sharp loop. And that's just because of the tangency. So that's uh, the basic principle behind how the curves work and um, pretty much we use those to outline the background and we create a selection from our path. Whenever we click and drag and we're still creating our path like this, you can actually click on one of these handles and move it and that'll create a sharp corner for you. This will be handy um, pretty really actually right here specifically on the apple whenever we're tracing its outline but we'll get into that in a minute. All right, let's go ahead and undo all of that. And let's go ahead and start tracing out this apple. And we'll just, you just pick a spot to start with. I like just, I mean, it doesn't really matter, wherever. I started right here for no apparent reason. And I just clicked and I didn't drag. I mean, I, I could have dragged, I guess, but I, I just didn't. And here, I'm going to drag to make up for what I didn't do. Now here's where things get kind of cool. Now. If I release the mouse right now and I move on and I create the next curve, it, it's, it wants to be too big. See how it kind of sticks out beyond? That's because whenever I made this curve here, this line is huge. So we can click on this and drag it down so that whenever we make it here, it doesn't make such a long and sharp curve. And there's a shortcut to doing that too, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And then you just click again and you just drag. And now watch this, I'm gonna show you the shortcut this time because right now this handle here is all the way into the apple. And if I click up here for the next point, it's gonna go into it and we don't want that. So I'm gonna undo both of those and start making this curve again. Okay, that's good now, but the next line is gonna go into the apple like I said earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold in the shift key 
I'm going to move my mouse around. I'm going to release the shift key and look what happens. It breaks that line from the first line. So now I can just drag this where I want it to go and click. And this just makes things a lot easier. So then, you know, just click, create your curve, hold in shift, move the mouse, release it, and it breaks. And you just keep right on going. Sometimes I like to keep really small points on these really wavy areas like that. And maybe a little bit of a bigger curve here. And just take your time and oops, that was pretty bad. There we go. And look, I'm holding in shift, releasing shift, bringing it down. And then right here, watch, I'm going to click, oops, click, drag to create my curve, hold in shift, bring it back, and bring it over this way. Create your curve, hold in shift, bring it back. And of course an apple is a relatively simple shape to trace since it's pretty flat and round and simple. But I mean everything I've showed you just from this essentially explains the whole process. Alright, so in there, that's that. I'm going to bring it back a little bit because I don't want it to go too far out. And you'll learn to kind of get a almost like a sixth sense for where the curve is going to go just by looking at the lines and you'll just know that it needs to go back. Like this time I had to make the curve really long. I know that's going to be too much for that. So I'm going to bring it back and bring it over more along the apple. Just bring it back. And click. So we're almost through this trace. There we go. See how long I had to make that curve? I'm holding in shift and I'm just going to bring that back. Now again, if you wanted, if you don't like that method, you can always just make the trace and then click here and then click back on this one and edit the curve afterward if you don't if you aren't familiar enough with the curves tool to really figure it out on your own. You know, you can always click on any of these nodes at any point and fine tune it as you see fit. So, you know, if if you don't really like that it kind of gets a little bit of that, doesn't quite get all of the apple there, you can pull that and you can just tweak it into absolute perfection if you want to. You just go back and you click on every node and you just, you can click and drag to move the whole node or you can click on the individual handles and drag them as well. Okay, so now that our apple is traced, let's go ahead and look at our path. If you click on this tab right here, the Paths Dockable Dialog, which if you if you don't have it open, it's under Windows, Dockable Dialogs, Paths. Click on that and it'll either show it to you or it'll open up. This actually works a lot like the Layers Dialog where there are a bunch of, this will essentially show you a list of all of the paths that you have in your file and you can show them and hide them, move them, scale them, rotate them. You can do every, pretty much everything that you can do with a layer in terms of modifying it um, with a path. But for now, what we're going to do with it is we're going to actually use it to make a selection. So we have this apple traced perfectly and we're going to turn it into a selection by clicking on the path to selection button, which is right here. And what it does is it turns that path into a selection. Alternatively, you can also just hit Shift V, and whatever path is active, it'll turn it into a selection. Now that we have our apple selected, you can just right click on it and click Add Layer Mask, and set it to Selection and click Add. And there you go. Your apple is perfectly isolated and removed from the background. So, I hope that helps. But there's always more to it than that. For example, let's say that 
you have this apple selected and you have it isolated from the background by doing the steps I showed you earlier at layer mask selection and you wanted to remove this little water drop from the selection you could do that by simply well either one you could just modify the layer mask and get rid of it or two you can click on the paths tool again click over here on create a new path just hit OK works a lot like a layer zoom in on that water drop and trace it kind of, well maybe a little further back there we go and then hold in shift like we've been doing there we go okay now if we click on the on the uh, original outline trace path and we just simply click on this path to selection button it'll create a selection if we click on the other path that we created of the water drop and we hold in control and we click on this button it will remove that from the selection so now whenever I right click and click add layer mask by selection it'll actually remove that too okay so the next thing I want to show you guys is how the paths tool can be used to actually trace something so I went ahead and I made a new layer here and if you don't know how to do that um, go ahead and check out my layers tutorial which was earlier um, but anyway so we're gonna go ahead and actually use this apple tracing to make an outline of an apple so let's hide the apple layer for now and we'll go ahead and hide all these other extra paths so the only path that's actually visible is our apple layer and I just did that to make it a little more clear as to what's going on so whenever I right click on this there's an option down here called stroke path if we click on that and we leave it on stroke line you can see we have some settings here. We have a stroke width of, you know, however wide, and pattern. You can set the line. As, excuse me. You can set the stroke line to either being a solid color or a pattern. Solid color will just use the foreground color on your color palette, and a pattern will just use whatever pattern you have selected. I recommend just simply leaving the anti-aliasing checkbox always checked, just because it makes things look nicer. Um, then there's a bunch of other settings here, but we'll get into that in a minute. First off, I just want to show you what this tool does. So we'll leave it at the default settings and just hit stroke. And what it did was it created a line right along the path itself. And just in case you weren't sure, these paths are actually just reference tools. They're not they're not visible in the final image. Like right now, if I exported this out as a JPEG, this pink outline wouldn't show up. The path is just for GIMP. It's, it's a lot like the guides that we talked about in the first lesson. They're just there to kind of help you. So again, let's right click and let's click stroke path again and make sure we're on the right layer. And let's try something different this time. Let's go ahead and increase the line width a, a lot and hit stroke. You'll notice it created a much thicker line. Now if we were to right click on that and click stroke path again, well let's undo the actual, there we go. Right click and click stroke path. If you tried something like the line style, you can actually create dash patterns like this and click stroke and it'll actually just build lines, little dashes. So that's kind of cool. Um, but what's really cool to me is the stroke with the paint tool and there's a lot more settings inside of here I just recommend just playing around and seeing what some of these different settings do and just kind of learn uh, the paint tool is really cool because what you can do is you can take the paint tool being the paintbrush and whatever brush you have activated whenever you do this is the brush that it's going to use so let's say that we wanted to use this foliage brush if we hit stroke right now it actually will trace the outline using that brush. Now that's not a very good example, but hey. So let's go ahead and right click and click stroke path again and try changing the brush over to this this sparks brush. 
and then just click stroke. You'll notice it, it creates a very that very shiny, just sparkly looking thing. But it went right along the path. So, you know, there's there's a lot of potential with this as long as you think of how you can use it. Alright, so let's go ahead and try going back into the stroke path again. Now that was just using the individual brushes. That's assuming that you're just working with a simple animated brush and you're not even doing anything with it. But what happens if we tried something like, okay, so the let's take a simple circle. Just a simple basic circle brush. And let's click emulate brush dynamics and hit stroke. See how it fades it? It started at the beginning of the path, faded in, got sharp, came back, and as it got close to the end, it faded out. Why did it do that? It did that because of our new paintbrush dynamics. Now, if you don't know anything about the brush dynamics, that's a whole new topic in itself. But the point is, is if you right click on this path and you click stroke path and you emulate the brush dynamics, whatever dynamic you have selected it will use. For example, if I instead clicked on the confetti brush which does this wicked thing with a circle, mind you this is a normal circle brush and it's doing this, and then I right click on the path and I click stroke path and I check that emulate and hit stroke, look what it does. It did all kinds of stuff there. So experiment with that um, experiment with the paint dynamics and you know in general if you haven't already there's so much power here it's incredible but that pretty well sums up how the path tool works and what it can do for you um, of course you know you could actually use the paths to draw things from scratch and do a lot of other things along those lines but primarily myself I use it for tracing out stuff but I did want to go ahead and show you the ability to stroke things so that you could potentially use it to create other things. So I hope this lesson helped. If you guys have any questions about the paths tool or if you guys notice or happen to have any troubles using it, please don't hesitate to comment in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to help. Thanks.